Stage here, uh, head coach Eric Musselman, as well as uh, Devontae Davis, JT Note, and Stanley Amude. Uh, coach, if you can please open up with a statement, and then we'll take questions just for the student athletes, and then we'll conclude with Coach Musselman. So, Coach, a statement from you, please. Yeah, just a ton of uh, credit to Vermont. They're so well coached. They understand their roles. Uh, they play really hard. Uh, they're really smart basketball team. They can shoot to three. They present a lot of problems in preparation. Um, but I thought our guys, you know, to, to a man, stepped up big time uh, with, uh, with J.D., you know, getting into foul trouble in the first half. Uh, Devo Davis stepped up huge, uh, saved us uh, with, his, with his ability to score and, and, and also run our offense tonight. And, uh, and Stan was, was phenomenal. We, we, you know, we probably could have run some more plays for him. Um, but Stan came up huge tonight on a stage that, you know, it was his first time being on it. So really proud of, of Stan and what he did. And obviously, you know, we had confidence in the second half that J.D. would put together a, a really good second half offensively, which he did. And, and obviously, Devo, uh, the bigger the stage, the bigger the performance. All right, questions for the student athletes? Just raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone around. We'll start here in the front. It's coming this way. Is this may, may, maybe for for Stan and, and JD? Um, you know there were upsets here today. Two big upsets. You know Kentucky got knocked off by a 15 seed St. Peter's. Uh, Vermont gave you guys all you could handle. I guess just how, how big is it to survive these first round games and not be an upset victim like happens to a lot of teams? And what do you think was the key to you guys being able to to avoid that? Maybe Stan and then JD. It, it's huge. You know um, we know coming in that every possession we we're gonna have to fight. You know. Um, I don't think we, we came in uh, relaxed or anything. We were came in um, ready, to, ready to go. And I think the upset's going around and it's, it's March. And so we just got to be ready. Yeah, just like what Stan said, we just got to be ready. Uh, got to come out ready to play. Um, this tournament is nothing guaranteed. Uh, everybody trying to win. So with that, we just got to come out there and play from the jump to the finish. Uh, question in the back, and then we'll come up to the front. Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. Stan, this one is for you. I mean, when, when things get thick in the heat of the battle, man, you, you pretty much seize the moment. You never get too high, never get too low. You made some big three-pointers down the stretch. Uh, just care to talk about what really went into that, you know, down the stretch for you there. Uh, I, I think it's just preparation and, and confidence, you know, in myself. You know, I believe that, and my teammates believe that, you know, if I take those shots, you know, they're going to go in and... You know, all my threes, like I said, I usually always come off assists, so credit to them for finding me. And, you know, Coach just told us before the game, like, we're built for it, so we, we're built for this, we're battle tested, and, and we were ready to go. Okay, in the front. Yeah, for, for Devo and JD, just, just thoughts on Stan's game tonight and how much of a difference maker he can be when he's playing with a little bit of swagger like he showed tonight and a bounce in his step. Uh, he's huge. Um, before he came, me and Stan talked, I was just telling him, like, when when it get uh, crunch time, like we gonna go to him. He kind of like Justin Smith, like with his body type, the way he play. Um, he a little more offensively skilled. So we just told him like, you gonna be that guy. So just be ready. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um, like JD said, Stan can score on all three levels. So I think um, we use that to his advantage um, in our offense. And I think as we continue to run plays for him, he continue to make plays for us. Um, and himself. So I think um, if we continue to do that down the stretch like we did tonight, then um, the sky's the limit for, for Stan. You're in the blue. Devo, I think you're averaging like 15 points in NCAA tournament games now. <laughs> what is it about this stage that just brings out the best to you? Um, I'm just playing basketball, you know. Um, I think, like Coach Must said, um, the bright lights, um, we, all, we all need to step up at some point. And so I think the team and I know that when it's time to play, then – like I was telling them in the locker room, you win, you advance. And so we just wanted to find a way to win. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. This is this for J.D. and maybe Stan. Uh, J.D., how tough was that first half? And then what was the key to bouncing back in the second half? How much were you sweating out that turnover they called with nine seconds in reverse? And then Stanley, what did you think of J.D.'s uh, second half? Um, just got to be more aggressive. I feel like I settled too much in the first half. Um, in the second half, I got downhill a little more, made plays for my teammates, and uh, I thought it was out on me. Honestly, I'm not going to cap to you, but they gave us the ball back. 
Yeah, uh, JD had a huge second half. You know, we would, we don't think we win that game without him stepping up, and he knows that. You know, he got a lot. We really put a lot of trust into him in those in those situations, and you know, he handles the pressure well, and he knows that um, he's got to come through for us, and he, and he did today. Stand after tonight, I think you've hit three threes now in five of your last six games. Like, what's been the difference lately? You just seeing a big rim or what? Yeah, uh, I feel good shooting the ball. You know, a lot of confidence. My teammates and coaches, you know, do a good job of finding me. So I think, you know, I've just been getting a lot of reps in and, and just picking my spots. Help oh, in the back, go ahead. Andre Robinson, Chandler, your community news. Congratulations on the win. Do you think there's anything you need to work on uh, before the second round matchup against New Mexico State? Uh, I would say, you know, you know, maybe containing the ball a little better. They did a good job of, you know, we were trying to take away the three ball, so they were, they were doing a good job of driving us and, and forcing us to rotate in the first half. And, and I think we do got to just do a better job of uh, staying in front of the ball. Any other questions for our student athletes? Oh, one more in the back. Last one. Devo, this question is for you. I mean, you know, y'all pretty much had the game. Y'all controlled the game for the most part. But then, you know, Vermont is, you know, quite sure, you know, a team's definitely going to make their run. What was Coach Musselman telling you guys at that point when Vermont, you know, started to make their run? Yeah, we knew Vermont was going to make a run. Um, we just didn't know when. Um, they're a great team, like Coach Mus said. So we just, oh, we, once they make their run, we have to stop it and make our own run, you know. And so I think we did that. Um, we did that pretty well. And once we made our run, I think we kept the lead. Um, and since since we since I think the last few games, teams been making late runs on us, and I think. Um, as a team, we've all come together and stopped that run and, and came together and finished the game out really well. All right, we do have one last question via Zoom. So, uh, guys, you'll hear a question coming over the speakers here. So, once you hear it, uh, please answer it. So, if you're a caller, if you can hear that, go, uh, please uh, ask your question. This question's for Devontae. Devontae, how important is it for you to be able to come off the bench and provide such a contribution to this team, especially on this kind of stage? Um, I think it's just me um, coming off the bench and just doing whatever it takes to help us win. Um, if it's getting on the floor, getting rebounds, um, or even going to the basket and trying to draw fouls and, and score. So um, whatever it takes to win, I think um, that's, that's my ability coming off the bench. All right. I want to thank student athletes for your time. Appreciate it. Sir. Good job, man. We'll uh, continue the questions for Coach Musselman here. Uh, we'll start with you, Mike, and uh, what are you next? Mike Harrington, Buffalo News. Uh, Eric, players get ready to play, and they're a little Teflon to things as a coach. How nervous did New Mexico State and Richmond make you that it just happened in this building? And then secondly, where'd you get the sneakers? Um, well, I've been wearing a different uh, theme sneaker um, all season long. Um, one of our staff members, mother-in-law, has done probably 80%, but then a school teacher brought me a pair that he painted one day. A couple different students on campus have painted some shoes. Um, what, was, what was the first? How nervous were you about Richmond and New Mexico State? Um, not, I, you know, like I, I kind of know what's going to happen. I mean, we all do. We all know that there's going to be upset. So um, watching that, you know, watching those games earlier today didn't really affect, you know, my mentality at all. As a matter of fact, I, you know, used in part of our pregame just talking about how much respect we had to have for, for Vermont and how every possession was going to, you know, matter. But so I don't think that necessarily that, you know, nerves or, or angst or anything like that needs to come into play. I mean, um, you know, we pride ourselves on rebounding. We pride ourselves on on defending people, and I, you know, tell the guys the last three days that like defending and rebounding, having, you, your nerves are never going to affect those two things. Um, but I, you know, obviously, when you're a higher seed, um, especially I think in the first game, um, you know, there is an added element to it for sure. And then I think once you get that first game, you know, n now all you know, it, it is just playing. You know, last year. You know, it was Oral Roberts that we had to play as a, as a you know, it progressed. They were a, a lower seeded team, and, and, uh, but we didn't feel that pressure like we did in game one against Colgate, just like tonight. I think there is a little bit of extra 
just getting the first win, you know, it's, 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 it's the hardest one to get, in my opinion. All right, over here. Coach, we've mentioned Stanley Amude playing in his first NCAA tournament. Uh, just curious what you had seen from him this week in the buildup and, and if you had a sense that he was maybe due to have a big game like he did tonight. Yeah, it was interesting before the game. I mean, he was uh, pretty kind of non-emotional, um, you know, laser focused. I mean, we got here, you know, early because the, the tip time kind of kept getting moved back. Um, and the, we just have one locker room. So I would kind of pop in, out, of, you know, from the hallway and couple guys had their phones just because, you know, we don't collect the phones until, you know, 90 minutes before tip-off. He wasn't one that had a phone. I mean, he was, he was staring right at the video screen as we had uh, Vermont film rolling. So I didn't, but, you know, to sit here and say that I had some feeling that he was going to have a great, I, I, I really didn't know because it was his first tournament. Um, I, I, I did go to bed last night thinking that Devo and, and J.D., and Jay Will would have a huge impact on this game. Oh, right, yeah, sure. Yeah, Eric, free throws, you know, getting to the lines have been a big uh, MO for you guys. You hit an eight out of 10 to close it out. How big was that? And just uh, the, the clutch free throw shooting you, you guys showed? Huge. I mean, we do, I mean, I think I've mentioned it to you guys. We do a drill at the end of every practice called perfect free throw. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's time consuming. Um, but last year when J.D. Note told me he's more nervous doing perfect free throw drill than he is in a game with the game on the line, I know it, it does put pressure on our guys. And, and clutch free throw shooting, you know, is, has been very big for us all year. I mean, I feel like we've done a great job at the, at the free throw line. All right in the back. Coach Musselman, you muscled your way through this uh, round one. Um, were there any other players that weren't on the podium that you felt played exceptional, that, that felt, fulfilled their roles? Let's keep going. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that uh, Adishi did a phenomenal job defensively. I mean, he's always assigned, um, you know, to the, to, to, to the offensive player that we feel uh, his length can bother. And I think every game there's always little things that happen you know, I thought Trey Wade did a really good job defensively, although it might not show up on the box score. And, and even Chris Likes, I mean, we put him in at the end of the first half um, and his two free throws, I thought that gave us a, a little bit extra cushion instead of going in five to go up seven. Um, so I think everybody that, you know, that played for us tonight, you know, in some way, you know, contributed. Yeah, up front. Yeah, Eric, last night, why exactly were you confident that Devo was going to have a, a, a big game tonight? Um, I, I mean, look, the, you know, Devo, Jay, Will, and and, um, and J.D., I mean, we, it's really hard to go to an Elite Eight. And, I, you know, even that, as I look back at that Baylor game, I mean, and we talked about it earlier today amongst our staff, I mean, we played Baylor better than anybody. And uh, those, those three guys, two of them as freshmen, um, I felt like, you know, that they've grown, and so, and so has, has J.D., and so um, we need those guys to play well in this environment, and, uh, you know, J.D. was able to regroup at halftime, and I whispered to him, like, I'm still going to run plays for you, like, you can't hide, man, like, I'm, I'm going to you, and we're going to sink or swim with, with, with kind of your performance in this last 20 minutes, and I thought he, he started attacking the, the rim a lot more. Eric? Um, Ryan Davis didn't have a field goal attempt in the last 13 minutes. What changed there for you defensively? Say, say that again. R Ryan Davis did not have a field goal attempt in the last 13 minutes. What changed there defensively? Yeah, we you? changed our pick and roll coverage. I thought that they were um, picking us apart. Um, we tried, you know, in the first half to switch up our coverage every time out so that they couldn't have a steady diet. Um, and what we ended up going to was switching um, one through five and even switch some of their dribble handoff actions which was our plan C. We normally don't get even to a plan B. Um, unfortunately for the game coming up on Saturday, we will not have a plan A, B, and C because we won't have enough time um, with our preparation. But we were able to have three different coverages that we were able to work on. And uh, we went to our last resort, and I thought it, it, it affected them a little bit.
Uh, Coach, before the game, you guys uh, went to Niagara Falls. You were seeing wearing a lot of Bills and Bandits gear, posting on social media. Just, I guess, talk about embracing, I guess, the environment here and really em embracing the city of Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, I went for maybe an hour and 40-minute walk today. I was really happy that it was sunny and uh, I could wear shorts. Um, I went with, like, five of the staff today. We, I mean, we, you know, we, we've had two incredible meals I had no idea the food was this good. I don't know if we just got lucky with the two restaurants we went to. Um, but, I, I mean, that's part of this thing is, like, what are we going to do? Keep the guys whole, you know, in the hotel. And, I mean, we did that last year for, it seemed like, an eternity in the bubble. Like, we're the anti-bubble team right now. Like, we're going to get out. We're not going to have all our meals in the hotel. We're going to go to restaurants. We're going to experience different things. So, I, you know, like I said, it's, it's the anti-bubble philosophy this year. Up front here. Go. I do need a, a Bills Mafia hoodie. I got to go try to find one of those in the morning. <laughs> hey, Eric, this first time Arkansas has won their first game at back, an NCAA tournament game back to back years since the late 90s. I mean, how significant is that to you? And then also, I can't help but notice you, you're icing your shoulder down. I hope you didn't dislocate it, you know, d during the game or something. How, how's the shoulder? Shoulder wasn't good today, even before the game. It's heat, not ice, Bob. But that's really irrelevant. What was the first part? Oh, uh, this game was uh, win. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, we came. We, when, we, when we saw our name on Sunday, um, in the tournament, I mean, we came here to win. Um, so I don't know, you know, the significant, I mean, we expected to win the game. We expected it to be a hard-fought game. Um, you know, we'll go into that same mentality Saturday. I mean, fear nobody, respect everybody. Um, New Mexico State's a really confident team. Um, we're going to regroup. They got a little bit of head start on, on preparation by a few hours. Um, a little more, I shouldn't say preparation, a little more rest. Um, so we just got to wait to see what time we play on Saturday. And, and uh, you know, it'll be a 40-minute game that'll be entertaining. And, and uh, like I said, New Mexico State's a great team. But we came here to win, Bob. So it's, it's not like we're we, – we didn't celebrate tonight in the locker room like, like maybe we have in the past. I think it's – you know, we felt like we should win tonight. Go, right, John. Eric, John Warrell with the Associated Press. Sorry, I just got here. I'm not sure if you were asked. Uh, the significance of how the team overcame Note struggles uh, or in the first half and, you know, how cold he was and the fact it took him a little while to, to get going, and, but you guys kept maintaining your composure in the lead. Yeah, I thought Devontae Davis really stepped up for us offensively. He became really aggressive at that point guard position. Um, you know, sometimes I play him at the two and the three, and – and, uh, you know, felt like tonight, matchup-wise, defensively and offensively. I mean, J.D., this happens a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of like, all right, he, you know, we just – and I'm a coach that just won't play players with two fouls in the first half. Um, I just believe the, the last ten minutes of the game are so important that I want to have my best players available. Um, so – but J.D. was, you know, we – I don't know if you were here when I said it. I mean, I told him at halftime, my man, I'm going to you. We're going to run. <laughs> we're running all the sets for you. And we, we hadn't run the first maybe t 31 minutes of the game. We hadn't run our, our uh, fist out 23 dive red. And we, and we went to it and milked it. And he and Stan just got great look after great look. Um, and sometimes, you know, you want to hold a set based on matchups and stuff until, until the latter part of the game. And, I couldn't run the play anyhow because J.D. was sitting next to me. So, All right, Coach. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks.
right, we're joined now by head coach John Becker, along with Ryan Davis and Ben Shungo. Uh, coach, if we can op if maybe open up a statement and then we'll take questions for the student athletes. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, you know, obviously disappointing uh, with our season ending, um, but I, I, I couldn't be more proud of my team and the way they competed tonight. You know, I mean, it just, um, you know, we wish we could have shot free throws better. We wish we could have rebounded a little bit better at the end. But I, uh, <clears throat> these guys left it all out on the court against a, a really, really good Arkansas team. I'd like to congratulate them on the win and wish them luck moving forward in the tournament. But um, yeah, it hurts. And, and, um, but as a coach, as a leader of these, this group of people that I was, had the pleasure of being around this year, uh, I couldn't be more proud. All right, we'll start with questions for the student athletes. Uh, John here in the front, you can start. Uh, John Warrell with the Associated Press is for Ryan. Just as as Coach put it, do you feel it, it looked and do you feel as if it, you left everything on the court against a good defensively defensively sound team and you know scored 71 points against a team that was giving up only 64? Just your thoughts, as disappointing as this loss is, just what you left out there. Yeah, I think you know Coach said we definitely left some things out there on on the table, but when you know, all said is done. I think that we, um, you know, gave it our best shot at it, and you know, um, you know, credit to them. They play real tough physical defense, but you know, we were able to find some sex, some certain things. Um, so, you know, it's credit to them how hard they play on that end. But you know, I definitely feel like we uh, found some confidence and were able to put on a um, pretty tough, tough game. So, in the back, Andre Robinson, Challenger Community News. This is for either player. Um, you guys fought and fought and fought hard. Um, what do you take from this loss that you can actually build on um, moving forward? Um, well, um, you know, this was my last year, so uh, you know, obviously this loss is tough. But for the younger guys, for the remaining guys on the team, um, you know, it just shows that we can compete with anybody. Um, you know, but. Uh, with saying that, um, you know, every possession is key. Um, you got to try to win every possession, especially with, you know, good teams like this. So um, it gives them courage and gives them, you know, another boost of confidence to, uh, you know, go out there and uh, compete with teams like this. Jack, it's Simmons, WCX. Uh, Benny, uh, obviously kind of the strategy for this team all year has been uh, you, you pick and probe inside, you find your outside shots. and, and Seems like a lot of those were kind of falling for a little bit, but kind of maybe a little bit of a gap there in the middle of the second half. Was it just a matter of the shots weren't falling when you needed them to, or was there something that they were doing to kind of push you guys off the line a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think they did a good job with their pressure, with um, uh, you know trying to limit our threes or at least contesting them pretty heavily. Um, you know, trying to get us in uh, the two-point range and whatnot. Um, I think some shots just didn't fall for us. Um, there were some plays where we didn't execute. Um, could have done that better, but um, you know, props to get, props to them again for uh, you know playing as hard as they did. Back here, Ben, Coach Ryan. Congrats on a great season, um, Ben. Especially for you, your last season playing Vermont basketball. How do you think you're going to look back at it? Uh, yes, yeah, um, you know, it's it's crazy to think that you know it's it's to the end right now. Um, I think I'm going to look back at it, um, just you know, being grateful that. Coach Brecker gave me a chance, and uh, you know, to really just to, to bloom as a player, but most importantly as a person, and um, just creating the relationships that I have with all these guys and past guys. Um, you know, it's, it's a really special, special place, and um, this basketball program is is a uh, the best, best. So, Ryan, what about you? How will you look back at the season? I know it's raw. I think just you know, every time we stepped on that court, we enjoyed one another, and um, we really found. Um, just enjoy with how we play basketball and, and kind of how we function on and off the course. So um, that is kind of the main takeaway, just how together we work through everything. And um, whenever adversity hit in a game or whatever, when things weren't going our way, we were able to bounce back cause, just because that chemistry. So. Right, up front here, real question. Is this for Ben? You guys did a good job of getting Note in foul trouble in the first half. and. He, he was struggling, but he, he, always, he always seems to find a way to score in the second half. What do you think of the way he responded in the second half and then 
Uh, Devo Davis, number four for them, came off and had a, off the bench, had a pretty good game. What would what, what, you think of number four for Arkansas? Um, yeah, I mean, he did a good job with just coming off the bench and uh, playing his role and uh, attacking where you could attack. Uh, you know, kind of gave him a boost. Um, you know, Note, you know, did a good job with, you know, even though he was in tr foul trouble, uh, you know, he was able to get to the line and kind of get back to a rhythm. So, um, you know, that's just a testament of uh, them keep going and uh, they did a good job with that. Right, go ahead. Uh, ben, with nine seconds left, uh, ball goes out of bounds. You're down by two. Originally called, it was going to be your ball, call over turns. Uh, what was kind of going on emotionally in that, whatever it seemed like forever? Yeah, um, you know, with just, you know, a moment like that, you know, you always obviously wanted to go your way. Um, it was turned and that was it. And so, you know, um, we just had to just kind of stay ready and try to try to get a steal. If not, a foul, then um, try to get uh, back on offense and make a play. All right. Anything else for our student athletes? Oh, one more in the front here. Oh, okay. Uh, for Ben and Ryan, how do you think you're leaving this program? How close is it to um, winning in the NCAA tournament again? I mean, I think we're as close as you know as can be. You know, we're right there, and we're able to. We've shown we've been able to compete with the teams like this, and um, we've proven that we are able to get back to here year after year. And um, that's something that's really hard to do, but um, to get over that hump is something that um, still we have yet to do in the in the recent future. But I think we're right there. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a lot of potential. Um, and we're, we are right there, um, even our non-conference schedule. Um, you know, we can compete with these teams. So, uh, you know, we still we still got more work to do, but um, we're definitely right there. And right, one more question in the front here. Ryan, I think Arkansas hit eight out of 10 free throws for their last eight points. They're, I've been a good free throw shooting team all year. But how frustrating is that when you're fouling them? You're obviously hoping they're going to miss. They, they, you know, do a pretty good job of knocking them down to, to, to you know, maintain the lead. Yeah, I mean, it's just credit to them, and that's a clutch situation. Being able to knock down those free throws is huge, and obviously you're hoping for a miss, um, but, uh, you know, that's their job to go knock those down, so credit to them. All right, well, thanks, gentlemen. We'll excuse our student athletes at this time. Now we'll continue the question now with Coach Becker. Again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone around. We'll start you back there, gentlemen. Go ahead. JB, obviously, a uh, situation like this is always really emotional. Um, it seems like you're maybe even more emotional this time than after the last two um, NCAA tournament defeats. What's kind of going on through your mind right now? Yeah, I mean, I just, I just feel bad for the kids, you know, and, and, um, and for our program that we couldn't find a way to win tonight. And Arkansas is really good, and, and we knew we'd have to play near perfect basketball, and unfortunately, um, we didn't do that, but um, really, I, I'm just so proud of these kids and, and this team. It was just a pleasure to be around all year. They worked so hard. They were so good um, and are so good. And it just hurts when there's just going to be a lot of guys that aren't going to be here, you know, and just uh, you've been with them a long time, you know. And so, um, you know, it's, it's – um, and like I said in the, you know, earlier that, you know, we came here to, with with high expectations for ourselves, and when and when you know, we haven't lost a lot of games, you know, and so, um, you know, to, to have your season end, uh, you know, for everyone but one team, it ends on a loss, and, and that that just um, it hurts. In the back, Andre Robinson, Hillinger Community News, Coach Becker. Even after the game, I seen you happy, astute with with the fans and. So it's such a class act. Um, with guys like Ben who are done with their collegiate careers, what's the conversations that you have with athletes as such as, uh, as they're finishing off their careers, even after? Yeah, I mean, you're a coach for life, right? And so our relationships are just going to take a different, um, just going to take a different course. But I'm always going to be here for them, and um, we'll get to – What's next for them? I mean, finishing schools first. We'll we'll, we'll have plenty of opportunities to 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 um, you know as a group to be together. You know, not on the court, but um, at dinners and and um, you know. So it doesn't feel like goodbye, you know, at all. But it it, it just um, 
you know, and, and so the, the, the conversations will be what's best for them and what, what they want to do in the future and, and um, how we can help in any way. Right in front here. Oh, you can start. They had the microphone. <laughs> Coach, I'm just curious for your impressions of Stanley and Mude tonight and what made him a, a challenging cover for, for your guys. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with him. I mean, gosh darn, he's huge. Like on tape, he didn't look that big and, and uh, could really shoot it and uh, really provide spacing for them. I thought he was really, really good and impressive, like looked like a pro, you know, and, and um, you know, he's a good player for sure. But you guys did a good job getting no in, in foul trouble and he was struggling, but he always – that's kind of his M.O. this year. He gets some foul trouble and he has big second halves. What do you think of his second half? And also Devontae Davis, number four for them. He, I think he averages like 15 points in five SC, or NCAA tournament games. And the rest of the games, he averages about eight. Yeah. Um, just wonder yeah, he started. averaged seven coming in, Davis, and, and he, he gave them a lot. You know, that was my fault. We should have been forcing him right everywhere. He was getting to his left hand, and he's tough in that mid-range, and, and he did a great job. Great job in, Nate was was good, you know, and, and again, that was bad coach on my part. They just kept running the same set and, you know, we should, you know, we didn't do a good job of keeping him to his left hand and, you know, and, and so um, he's a really good player and, 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 and uh, um, you know, we weren't trying to get him in foul trouble. That's just kind of the way it went. We had uh, two guys with three fouls. He had three, he got his fourth. Um, and so, you um, yeah, I mean that's what that's what the deal is, right? I mean your your best players have to make plays, you know, and and um, our best players made plays. That's why we stayed in the game, and and, and their best player in the last ten minutes um, made a lot of good plays. Ryan Davis didn't have a, a shot in the last thirteen minutes. How, how much did that hurt? I, I know he was out. He took took him out for a few minutes there, but not getting that shot in the last he, thirteen minutes. So. The way they were guarding him, with they were just staying matted to him, you know, and so we were just running middle ball screen. They were saying mad and our guards were just coming up, coming off the screen and just getting downhill, scoring or, 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 or finding guys for wide open threes. So, um, you know, so he was generating wide open offense for us without him touching the ball. You know, obviously, do I wish in hindsight that um, we could, he could have, you know, gotten more touches, absolutely. But they, they did a good job of really, um, not letting that, but he was the reason we were generating um, that offense at the end. The thing is, we couldn't get any stops. We were we were scoring. Um, you know, we scored way more than they usually give up, but we just couldn't get stops. And we, you know, and and uh, and and then when we did, we couldn't get the rebound. And, and again, that's a credit to them. You know, it, it, it's not. You know, we're playing above our weight class here. You know, obviously, and um, and when you do that. Um, you know, and this has been the story in these games. You know, Florida State were right there with 10 minutes ago, and then it's offensive rebounds that, that hurt us. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just, you know, you're dealing with, with just a, a superior, you know, superior athletes, a lot of them, you know, a lot of guys. And, and so, um, and they're really good at offensive rebound. We've done a good job. And you look at the numbers, they only get, I think we only gave up eight. Um, but then we had like two or three over, uh, like box outs where they called it on us, you know. And so there was a combination of those two things where we couldn't finish the defensive possession when we got it, when we got them to miss, you know. And that, but I mean, they're the 15th best team in the country, and, and they're the second best team in the SEC this year. So, um, but our guys fought like hell, you know. They're, they were fighting like hell. So I can I can I can point stuff out on a box score or whatever, but. Um, you know, they gave everything they had, so what am I, you know, uh, uh, I'm proud as hell of them. Coach, over the last six years, you've answered and sung the praises of Ben Shungu maybe an infinite amount of times. Now yeah. that his career is officially over, how will you look back at it? Well, I mean, just an incredible story. He'll be forever remembered in Burlington um, and in our community. and. All the things I've ever said about him as a basketball player, we all know the people from Burlington in this room, what a person he is. And that to me is uh, the, uh, the legacy that he will leave. You know, how you treat people, how you carry yourself when you're the star of, of, of anything or you're known at all. 
Um, he's, he's been a class act since day one. He's had time for everybody. He always has a smile on his face. He's always in a good mood. Like, how do you do that? How do you do that? You know, I wish I could be like that. Any other questions for Coach Becker? All right, thank you for your time, Coach. Thanks, everyone. As a reminder, a recording of this press conference will be available on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly.